In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, <clears throat> and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Dear Father, dear faithful, on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost, we are encouraged to think about pruning. I think you should all know what pruning is. That's a necessary action done for trees and vines in order to bring forth good fruit. It also means that pruning could be taking out bad limbs and trees because they aren't bearing good fruit. So pruning is very important in the life of a husbandman who takes care of his vines or his forest or his trees, his orchard. So the same for us in our souls. What is our request today? Well, we always find our request on Sunday right there in the collect. A God whose providence faileth not in its designs, we humbly entreat thee, put from us all that might be harmful and give us all that might be profitable. Now we have to mean that. That collect prayer has to mean something to us. Sometimes we read over it so fast in the Mass, we're not paying attention to the intention. We're not making it our own. If we truly believe that God should put from us all that might be harmful and give us all that might be profitable, that could very much hurt us. That could require of us much humility. We don't like to give up the things that are harmful to us. And we look out over the horizon and say, what is profitable to us? And we know that God knows, but we don't often like it. So what's harmful to us, we have to be willing to put away and be willing to receive what is profitable. Now, well, even if it comes to, let's just take, for instance, suffering. I wish that nobody would suffer, that you'd have all your suffering take away, taken away by God. But then that would require that what is taken away, all suffering, but also bring us what's profitable. So if I had no more suffering in this life, I would hope I would have what's profitable enough to get to heaven. But oftentimes it's the other way around. Without any reminder of how dependent we are on God, we often go down the wrong road. So God knows exactly what to give us. And so when we pray this prayer, we're asking for him to look after our souls, to guide us to heaven to help us to put everything in order on this narrow path that leads to heaven. Not wide. It's not a wide path. We're told that the, the trail, the path is wide to hell, but the way to heaven is narrow. So make that prayer your own, and then consider in your life what you need to prune. What needs to come off the tree that's no longer bearing any good fruit? Better that than our Lord to say, depart from me, accursed or to say, that tree is going to be all shriveled up and die. So we need to look and see what needs to be pruned that we may receive what is profitable. So I'd like to stop for a moment to consider, it's pretty much what St. Paul will say or what we read in the gospel. We want to bear fruit, so we have to look around ourselves and see what needs to be pruned. And maybe it's a certain attachment to things, people, places, electronics, money, maybe our own vices. We come to realize after preaching retreats, and maybe you do too, by going on these retreats and maybe making a recollection, or maybe even coming to Sunday Mass, you realize, you know what, I really like holding on to those sinful things. Yes, I wouldn't do the worst things, but you know, it kind of just like makes a flutter in my heart and sort of an attachment to those things that are harmful to me, yet I, I don't want to let them go. You know, when the prodigal son was in the mud, at first he didn't see that as being real bad because he entered into it. You know, when he went down to eat with the swine and he was, that's all he had. At first that wasn't so bad to him. When he found himself in reality there at that level, then he woke up. But he was doing the sliding 
all the way down to that level. And it's often what we do. We slide down to this base level of eating with a swine and dwelling in the mud before we realize what's wrong, before we realize that we need to do better. Be wise. Be, be wise of the deceits of this life, the deceits of this life which take us down to the base level, and hopefully we wake, wake up then before it's too late. So look around at these attachments and then ask yourself, <clears throat> are they helping me to go to heaven? Are they helping me to save my soul? Are they helping me to save other souls? And if they are, very grand. Use them wisely. If they're not, get rid of them. Because they are like traps and tricks to keep us anchored down or to pull us down further. St. John of the Cross says that a little bird would not even be able to fly if there was a little hair holding its leg down to the surface. Just a little hair, just a little string. Could be a big-sized bird, but he's got to get up in the air with his wings, and he can't if he's, if he's anchored down by a little string, little hair even. And sometimes that's the case with us. Our Lord wants us to be perfect. He said so. Be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Yet we have these little attachments that don't let us fly. Don't, don't allow us to be free. So that's our examination, to look around and see what is profitable to us, what is harmful to us. And then when you look around at what's profitable to you, don't neglect it. What is profitable to us, dear faithful? Holy Mass, confession, holy communion, daily prayer morning and evening, daily rosary, doing good works for our neighbor, what we will call the great works of mercy, both spiritual and corporal. And then maybe just simple charity. That's to say, looking after God, the things of God, having a love for God and wishing to help that grow, and then the same for my neighbor. Those are profitable to us. But you see, sometimes we can't find what's profitable because we have all these other things that we're attached to that either keep us in a blasé state, sort of a laissez-faire type state, tepid. We don't get to fly, so we don't get to look around. The little bird or the soul that can fly can, can then look around and see, oh, yes, how come I've been doing that? Rather, I would like to do this. And the devil knows this. Our Lord said, beware of false prophets who come to you in the clothing of sheep. But inwardly, they're ravening wolves. There's so many things that they, the devil uses as an angel of light. He comes around, oh, once you do all these, these things and this over here to keep us distracted. Oh, but they're so good, Father. Possibly. But are they helping you go to heaven? The devil knows better than you. I don't know. Take, for example, it could be the man who must work day and day in, day out for his family. Yet he says to himself, ah, away with that. I'm just going to sit down here and read my books and study a theology. That's not helping his family. Yes, he could grow his own mind, and he must do his own hobbies and studies, but to dedicate all of his time to some kind of monastic life when he has a wife and children to look after, that's a deception, and vice versa. A priest or a monk or a sister, for us to say, oh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do all these other things. I could do these mechanics. I can go do, be this architect. I can do all these things to make money. That's wrong and deceptive. It's against his vocation. Beware of false prophets. And we know the result. If we don't remove what's harmful, if we don't go after what's profitable, then we won't bear the right fruit. We won't bear good fruit. St. Ignatius says that we can tell something's good by the sequence of events. How I started with the suggestion or intention, 
And then all the steps in between. Did the thing end good and well, the glory of God? If it didn't, something went wrong along the way. Something wasn't quite so pure or well thought out or done for the glory of God. He says that we're free to choose things that are indifferent or good, but never bad. To choose something evil or bad is not within my range. I put that aside. Then I look at the things that I have, indifferent or good, and I can choose those, because I'm not required to always choose the most perfect. That would be a great grace to do that. And St. Teresa of Avila had it, but not all of us yet. But we can choose what's indifferent. It doesn't have a certain morality, bad or good. I will use it for the glory of God, and that will give it good morality. It will give it a good turn, a good use. So think of that in your life. We're always weighing up things to do and choose. Make sure it's indifferent at least, or good. Not bad. We're not free to choose what's bad. We can because we have free will, but it's not what God wants. So think even of the simplest tasks that we have in our home, in our lives. Being indifferent or good, they can bear great fruit. They can be quite advantageous to us. So perhaps after this little meditation and examination on today's Mass and Gospel, your life will be more perfect. You will make your life more perfect. Right now, I know this limps a little bit, but on a scale of 1 to 10, on a scale of 1 to 10, how possible it is for each one of us to go to heaven? Where do you see yourself? Right now, sitting in the pew, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being going to heaven, and 1 going to hell. What scale, part of the scale are we on? A 5? A 6? Or worse? Then we have kind of an idea. Dear God, I've got to get working. Dear God, I might not save my soul. Work on it, dear faithful. It's my desire. It's Father's desire. Every priest wants souls to go to heaven. Yeah, you have to work at it. So make the communion, post-communion prayer your own as you finish your Mass today. May thy healing work, O Lord, both mercifully free us from all our waywardness and lead us to all that is right. Similar to the collect, isn't it? but sort of a capstone. I want you to heal me, mercifully free us from all our waywardness, and then lead us to all that's right. Make those prayers your own. Examine your conscience. And ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, who knew so well what it meant to put away what's harmful and to gather what's profitable in her life, she'll help us to do the same. She doesn't want anything but that. I know that all of you will make a good use of this Mass and these readings. Pray for those who do not. Pray for those who prefer to stay in their way of sin and, yes, are way low on the scale. They don't even wake up. I mean, we meet all these souls daily, and we wonder, dear God, what does their salvation look like? The way they're leading their life and the way they're headed looks bad. So let it not be said amongst us. Follow the Blessed Virgin Mary. Meditate upon this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.